that is between scripture and science, interpretations of scripture have been adopted that undermine and destroy the force of the word of God. Mm -hmm. Geology has been fought to contradict the literal interpretation of the mosaic record of creation. Millions of years, it is claimed, were required for the evolution of the earth from chaos. And in order to accommodate, here's the key word, in order to accommodate the Bible to this supposed revelation of science, mm -hmm. the days of creation are assumed to have been vast, indefinite periods covering thousands or even millions of years. Mm -hmm. Such a conclusion is wholly uncalled for. Mercy. The Bible record is in harmony with itself yes. and yes. with the teaching of nature. Yes. Yes. But now we want to move on to another very important point. There are very few in the Adventist church, most of them are the intelligentsia of the church. In other words, they're, uh, you know, scientific scholars who have concluded that the days of creation were not literal days. The majority of Adventists and even of Adventist scientists and theologians believe that the days were literal. Yes. Yeah. But now we want to transition into what the Roman Catholic Church teaches about creation, the days of creation. What is the papacy's concept? Both John Paul II, who was Pope for decades, and Francis I, the present Pope, have gone on the record saying that the story that we find in Genesis concerning the creation did not literally take place the way Genesis said. Both of them have said that the story of creation is a symbolic story. And that the days of creation lasted for millions of years. They were not literal. I want to read you what Pope John Paul II spoke to the Papal Academy of the Sciences about the length of the days of creation. Before I read his statement, however, I need to mention an encyclical that was written by Pope Pius XII. It's called Humane Generis, which means the origin of man. Up to 1950, when this encyclical was written, most Roman Catholics believed the story of creation as it's written in Genesis. However, because of uh, the theory of evolution was becoming very pre predominant in the, primarily in the developed countries. The Roman Catholic Church felt that they needed to accommodate the biblical creation story to scientific discoveries. And so basically, what Pope Pius XII did in this encyclical, he said, we need to leave the door open to the possibility that man came into existence through a long process of evolution through millions of years, but there's one thing that was non-negotiable, and that is that when man reached the level of a well-developed primate, God gave that primate a human soul. <laughs> so he opened the door to the possibility of evolution yeah. and creation existing side by side. Oh my Lord. Now with that in mind, I'm going to read what Pope John Paul II wrote and spoke to the Papal Academy of the Sciences. He's giving this speech to Roman Catholic scientists. He wrote today, almost half a century after the publication of the encyclical, because this is 50 years after the Pope Pius gave his encyclical. New knowledge, 50 years later, new knowledge has led to the recognition 
of the theory of evolution as more than a hypothesis. So he's saying the theory of evolution is not a hypothesis. He continued, it is indeed remarkable that this theory has been progressively accepted by researchers following a series of discoveries in various fields of knowledge. Speaking about biology, chemistry, microbiology, genetics, etc. He says they've all done studies and they've all reached the conclusion that evolution is true. He continues right, saying, it is indeed remarkable that this theory has been progressively accepted by researchers following a series of discoveries in various fields of knowledge. The convergence, in other words, the agreement between the conclusions of all of these different disciplines, the convergence, neither sought nor fabricated, of the results of work that was conducted independently in all of these sciences, is in itself a significant argument in favor of the theory. Now, an article appeared in the Chicago Tribune, which is the main uh, newspaper uh, in the city of Chicago, the most uh, subscribed to, in an article that appeared um, on October 25, 1996, the writer commented on what the Pope said. In a major statement of the Roman Catholic Church's position on the theory of evolution, Pope John Paul II has proclaimed that the theory is more than just a hypothesis, and that evolution is compatible with the Christian faith. In a written message to the Pontifical Academy of Sciences, the Pope said the theory of evolution has been buttressed, that means strengthened, by scientific studies and discoveries since Charles Darwin. But then the writer of this article is very frank in saying that you really can't reconcile scripture with science, with so-called science. He finishes uh, his article by saying, if taken literally, the biblical view of the beginning of life and Darwin's scientific view would seem irreconcilable. In Genesis, the creation of the world and Adam, the first human, took six days. Evolution's process of genetic mutation and natural selection, the survival and proliferation of the fittest human species, has taken billions of years according to sciences. So he's honest, he says, they are irreconcilable. The Pope is trying to reconcile the two. But he said, yeah, God used evolution as his method of creation millions of years, and then when you have a well-developed primate, then God gives the primate a soul. <laughs> trying to reconcile the biblical story. Let me ask you, what happens with the days of creation if you believe the Pope's version? The days of creation were not literal days. And we're going to see that that is, has huge implications. Huge theological implications. Now, Pope Francis doesn't believe in the creation story either. Let me read you what Pope Francis had to say. Do you know that Pope Francis says that the origin of the universe was with the Big Bang? Oh it took billion, that happened billions of years ago, 17 billion years ago. I don't know how he knows that. <laughs> but let me read you what he said. The Big Bang, which today we hold, not us, him, the papacy, which today we hold to be the origin of the world does not contradict the intervention of the divine creator, but rather requires it. Evolution in nature is not inconsistent with the notion of creation, because evolution requires the creation of beings that evolve. Because God creates the first blob of life, and he incorporates that in that blob of life, the capacity to evolve, and it reaches a certain point, a well-developed primate, so to speak, then God gives it a soul. In other words, God uses evolution 
as his method of creation. And that has serious problems for when you know it. So once again, he stated evolution in nature is not inconsistent with the notion of creation because evolution requires the creation of beings that evolve. That evolve. Now here's the most blasphemous part. When we, regard, when we read about creation in Genesis, we run the risk of imagining God was a magician with a magic wand, able to do everything, but that is not so. It's one of the greatest hopes in the last several decades.